Happy Monday, Remar nurses. That's right. I'm no longer in Ohio. I'm in paradise, otherwise known as Florida. You know I love Florida, especially during the cold winter months. I can only take the snow so long. And that is one of the beautiful things about being a nurse is that I can be a nurse anywhere on this planet. So I'm in the beautiful state of Florida. If you know, you know, sunshine. Uh, it's the sunshine state for a reason. And I appreciate it. I appreciate it. So we're going to do Monday motivation. We're going to do Monday motivation. And our topic for this Monday motivation is postpartum hemorrhage. Yeah, postpartum hemorrhage. And this is a great topic because we have coming up, we have love your content coming up. And we will be talking about pregnancy, maternity, STDs, all that good stuff. So if you love, love your content as much as I do, it's coming up. We're literally counting down the days. It's going to be a Wednesday and a Thursday, February 12th through the 13th. And to sign up for the workbook and to sign up for the class time and all the good stuff, go to remarnurse.com forward slash love. Makes sense because it's love your content. And on this journey, you're going to have to prioritize things that are important to you. If you want to be a nurse, the things that are pulling you away from nursing, you're going to have to let go of and you're going to have to be able to love, have to be able to look forward to the things that will drive you to your nursing career. So love your content is a part of that. We do it every February. Make sure that you sign up for it. We're going to get into postpartum hemorrhage. And because I'm not in my office, I have the paper, but no clipboard. I have the paper, but no clipboard, but that's okay. We're going to start our foundational review of postpartum hemorrhage. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you. Yes, I'm in Florida just for a little bit of time because I'm I'm passing through the state to go to bigger places. For Remar, we are looking for forward to, we're looking forward and we're looking forward to, <clears throat> excuse me, partnerships. We're looking forward to meeting our Remar nurses in their, in their countries. So I will be, I'm traveling, I'm traveling. All right, postpartum hemorrhage. Let's go, everybody. Let's go. When we talk about postpartum hemorrhage, we are talking about the period after the delivery of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven babies. However many babies that people are having, we know it can be multiple babies. We're looking at that postpartum period. So for postpartum hemorrhage, is it going to be more associated with a tawny or lacerations? Okay. This is quick, quick, quick review. Comments on the screen. Are we going to see it more with a tawny? Are we going to see it more with lacerations? Oh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we are absolutely going to see it with more a tawny. Yes, a tawny. It's going to be more related to that uterus, that uterus that has the abnormal presentation. Now, is the blood, because it's talking about hemorrhaging, so that's bleeding, is the blood going to be bright red or dark red? That's good. And think about this. This is a fundamental topic. What does bright red blood indicate? What does... Sorry, <laughs> my alarm. What does dark red blood indicate? So we are expecting bright red blood here as well because this is a fresh condition. This has a start, certain starting point. And so we're able to see the signs immediately. We're able to see the signs immediately. Okay, what about this? Are we expecting bradycardia or tachycardia? Which one? And we're looking at hemorrhaging. Yeah, we're looking at hemorrhaging. So what happens when you have a hemorrhage? What happens when, when there's a hemorrhage? Let me take that off there. Oh, no. <laughs> There we go. Uh, what happens when you have a hemorrhage? Yes, 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 yes. All right. Okay. So this is what we're talking about. Sorry, I have to adjust everything here just to make sure. All right. So we're talking about a, I think I saw it, tachycardia. Okay. Because with bleeding, the, breath, the blood pressure goes down, the heart rate goes up. Now, what about this one? For a for the uterus, are we expecting it to be boggy or firm? I'm moving on from boggy or firm. We absolutely expect, we expect a 
boggy uterus. Because the boggy uterus is more like, um, I say it's like a water balloon. It's very squishy. And that means that, that um, there is potential for bleeding because that uterus is supposed to be firm, but it's boggy. What's the treatment? Are we doing massage? Are we doing IV fluids? And listen, if you don't know these basic things about just the postpartum assessment, these are the generals that you need to absolutely study. Okay, so just make it in our minds, commit, we're going to study this. We're going to massage. And then are we given oxytocin or magnesium sulfate? Oxytocin will stimulate contractions. So it's going to stimulate contractions or magnesium sulfate is going to calm the system down. Which one are we going to be more inclined to wait for the doctor to order? Or which one will the doctor order? And we have to know how to give it. Yes, we're talking about ox oh, oxytocin. Yes, oxy. Because that is what we need to do. We need to massage that uterus. We need to um, mas massage that fundus, I should say, and get that postpartum patient not bleeding anymore. Okay. Now, remember, if you don't have the V2, this is where we do the work of passing NCLEX. Some people do this program in two weeks. Some people do this program in four weeks. It really just depends on how frequently you want to study. But most people should be studying at least four days a week. Four days a week, no longer than three hours a day. And try, please, just try to study from one resource, not multiple, just one. I want to put in my all of the PowerPoint slides that I have because there's many more. We're just going to get into the questions now. I'm going to put these PowerPoint slides into the V2, which is where I do my training anyways, so that you're able to see the postpartum slides. But let's go into the NCLEX questions now. All right. Today, I think you'll find these NCLEX questions more um, content based because with the postpartum period, there's not a lot of critical thinking. It's more of, do you understand the steps? So here's the first question is this. The nurse is caring for a postpartum client in the, medium post, in the immediate postpartum period. Which of the following findings would be an early sign of hemorrhage? Is it number one, pulse rate 78 over 78 to 123 beats per minute? Two, axilla temperature of 100.4. Three, blood pressure of 119 over 72 from 125 over 81. Or four, a respiratory rate of 21 breaths from 20. So we see some, we see some changes here. I'm asking you in the immediate postpartum period, which of the following would be an early sign of hemorrhage? Okay. And one thing I love about Florida is just the sounds of nature. <laughs> it's much like when I was in the Philippines. You hear the, the animals outside. But in Florida, there's always construction. They're always building something. So you hear the construction, you hear the, the bay, the pool, everything. So it's kind of nice to be in nature today. Correct answer is going to be, yes, that pulse rate jumping from 78 to 123 beats per minute. So during the first hour of the fourth stage of labor, that blood pressure and breathing of the mother should be checked every 15 minutes. So a rising pulse is an indicator of an early sign of blood loss, early sign of blood loss. How about question number two is this. The nurse is doing an assessment in a postpartum client and notes that the fundus is firm, but the bleeding is excessive. What's the initial nursing action? Number one, document the findings. Two, Initiate uterine massage. Three, inform the healthcare provider. Four, place the client in a Trendelenburg position. Oh, this is a good one. And this one can be kind of tricky because the nurse is already doing what? <laughs> yeah. So the answer is not assess the patient, right? What should we do after that? 
Correct answer here is great job. Three, inform the healthcare provider. If the bleeding is excessive and suspected, there may be something else. There may be a laceration on the cervix or the birth canal. The, the, the fundus is already firm. So massaging the fundus would not help this particular source of bleeding. Did you catch that? The fundus is firm. We're not going to be massaging it. Um, that was a good distractor. I saw some people fall for. How about question number three? The nurse is managing a client with postpartum hemorrhage. That's what we've been talking about. Who is becoming increasingly anxious? What should the nurse prioritize? Number one, provide emotional support to alleviate anxiety. Two, assess the client's blood pressure and heart rate. Three, encourage the client to deep breathe. Or four, turn off the lights ooh, to create a low stimulus environment. Okay, so in the postpartum period, we are dealing with what? <clears throat> okay. What are we going to prioritize as nurses? It will be, yes, it shall be number two, okay? That is going to be um, the priority because you have here two, you have here two concurrent issues, right? We have anxiety and then we also have postpartum hemorrhage. So what are we gonna prioritize managing? we're gonna always prioritize the hemodynamic status of the patient. And that's gonna be the blood pressure and the heart rate. Anxiety is going to be what? Psychological, yes. So physiological over psychological, no matter how big it is, no matter how big it is, okay? All right, how about this? This is it, this is a good one. At which stage of labor does the placenta fully separate from the uterine wall. At which st stage of labor does the placenta fully separate from the uterine wall? Is it the first stage? Is it the second stage? Is it the third stage or is it the fourth stage? What do we say? And again, if, if, if these questions are challenging to you, it is an easy solution. It's a really easy solution. You just got to go back and pick up a pen, pick up a notebook, and review this content. Because you should know what happens in the first stage, and the second stage, and the third stage of labor, and in the fourth stage of labor. Yeah. So the correct answer here is the third stage. Yes, that is after the delivery of the baby. The third stage is the delivery of the placenta. And this usually happens within a few minutes to 30 minutes after birth. Sometimes the doctor will let it happen naturally after the baby is born and the mother will push out the placenta. Or some doctors, I've seen it, they will literally, with that umbilical cord, they'll pull it out. Yeah, they'll pull it out. So these are part of the general the, just the general facts that you have to know for the NCLEX exam. I actually do not put postpartum in quick facts. It's actually something that I lecture on because it is very important that you see the big picture and not just understand isolated facts. So you can find this topic as well as my maternity view uh, review in the V2. V2, I'll also put the slides up for you guys today. And don't forget, you are signing up for love your content that's coming up that that'll be that that was the last one <laughs> um remarnurse.com forward slash love is where you can sign up for love your content it's dropping on february 12th and february 13th that's our next free community event is free no excuses why you can't come um yes i am um looking forward to going to haiti i'll be going to haiti soon so that is why I'm so like energized and I'm starting in Florida because, you know, that's a great stopping point. But looking forward to uh, just just connecting with people there. So really excited about that. Um, Monday motivation. This is my Monday motivation for everyone. 
And it's just a thought that I have been wanting to share with you. And I want you to know that you are going to be very successful in nursing, honestly. And I know from one successful nurse to another, you may even do even bigger things than you might see me doing. However, what I want to remind you is that you need to stay the course. You need to not get discouraged and give up because the success that you're going to have, you need to still develop into the person who can handle that success because it is not you today, okay? You're, you're on a journey. And the thing about a journey is that it takes time. And so along this journey, if you don't give up, along this journey, you will become the person who can handle a huge amount of success. But the journey is very important, even though it's long, because you're developing patience along the way. You're developing a, a heart to care for people and not just benefit from people. You become a giver on this journey instead of a taker. And that's very important. And so the, the way that you will get to the top, because you're going to the top, you're going to success, right? The thing about it is you're going to get there by taking the stairs. And when you think about the process of taking the stairs all the way to the top, it's a longer process. And it's the work that people don't want to do. Most people want to take the elevator to the top. They want to get there quickly. But when they get there, they don't have the character to stay there. But by you taking the stairs, you're going to do it the proper way. And that's one step at a time. So do not abandon the mission. Your success needs you to develop. Your future self needs you to stay the course. So I see the success in you. I'm telling you that when you get there, you will be more capable to handle it if you take the stairs. All right, everyone. So thank you so much for joining me today for Monday Motivation across the nation. Follow me on my journey to Haiti and other countries in the Caribbean um, this week. And I, I just want you to know that I am also in the grind. I'm taking the stairs. I'm trying to, to make Remar a global, a even more global uh, operation. And I know I have Remar nurses in all parts of the world. So I look forward to meeting you and I look forward to getting advice from you going in and out of